unfiltered, uncensored, and unapologetic. This is the Retail War Zone Podcast. Tonight we are talking about uh, toxic traits of bad managers. I do want to address the elephant in the room on all this, something that we don't really think about too much. But for us that have been managers, when you reach that point where you've hit the wall and you're burnt out and you don't want to do it anymore and you're trapped, some of us inadvertently adopt some of these behaviors. Um, so we all need to look inward there as a manager because it does happen. You know, not all of them because some of them are doozies, but, uh, yeah. So it's, um, one of those situations where your frustration and your anger kind of boils over into your everyday being, so to speak on the job. And we're not real pleasant to be around. I mean, let's face it. I mean, it, it just is what it is, but I also want to, you know, thank the community for all their input. And we're going to be going through all that here in just a few. Um, boy, did I not realize how therapeutic that thread was going to be for some people. I messaged blame tag. I'm like, holy hell, this thing blew up. Same thing with uh, Irish. He's like, well, it is like retail AA after all. Um, also, quick update. You look on the screen, it still shows that we have a Reddit and we do have a Reddit. But I purged that thing today. Um, it's not really... It's like the law of diminishing returns. We've met, met some great people through there. It's still there. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It just doesn't seem to be as beneficial from a community standpoint as Twitter is. It's kind of like the same thing with Instagram. Um, you know, maybe one day something will change there. But for right now, the only thing that's listed on, on the Reddit is just the link tree to all our links. Because today, when I posted what tonight's episode was going to be, like literally within two minutes somebody downvoted it to zero so why join a sub and you know when it's laid out exactly what it is only for stuff like that unless you know you're just trying to sabotage maybe you're a manager who's toxic i don't know <laughs> but that's kind of where we're going you know having so many different platforms you know it really does take a lot of time to manage all of them and really and truly the key to our growth has really been Facebook and Twitter. Um, Twitch is pretty good. And the best thing about Twitch is it allows people a certain level of anonymity, you know, because obviously on Facebook, most people have like their regular names and whatnot. So, you know, Twitch is an excellent outlet for people to kind of sneak under the radar if they don't want to sign up for a YouTube video. So <laughs> that's kind of where we're at. But anyway, the topic at hand. So, uh, like I do for a lot of these, I, you know, go scouring the internet for stuff. Now there is going to be a, a very positive thing that, that happens first. Um, my wife will tell you, I didn't learn this until I got out of the business. So, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be a hypocrite, but once you get out of the business, you realize these kind of things are important. So the Tuesday PSA, I posted this on Twitter on Tuesday Everybody needs to know this, all right? It is 100% okay to say no to any request from your boss that interferes with your personal time. They do not own you. Say no without guilt and keep on moving. Um, and, and that could be anything like, you know, let's say you get called on your day off. Somebody was supposed to close. They called out. And your boss calls you, and instead of asking you if you're willing to come in, they're like, I need you to be here at 4 o'clock. You, you need to come close. Uh, no, it doesn't work that way. And statements like that imply ownership of your time. Well, guess what? They don't own you. So, you know, things like that. If somebody calls you in on your day off and you agree to go in, make sure you get another day off. Don't let, you know, a manager call you in and all of a sudden, okay, now you're working six days, but I'm going to cut all your hours for the rest of the week to make sure you stay under 40 and don't get overtime. That's not how that works either. You know, that's making decisions for you, you know, without your input. So it, it, don't get taken advantage of. But what's up, Sean? So here we go. Um, pulled these from the net. We'll start with the 10 most common bad boss traits. Disrespectful, 43%. Negative attitude, 34%. Lazy, 
23%. Always talking about himself or herself, 16%. Inappropriate humor, 10%. Comes in late, 10%. Leaves early, 10%. Swearing, 8%. Loud phone calls, 8%. Sexist comments, 7%. Um, And that was a survey conducted in Great Britain. Um, Bad boss characteristics. This is pretty good. Number one, micromanagement. Number two, a one-size-fits-all approach to management. Number three, does not lead by example. Number four, lack of empathy. Number five, focused on blame rather than solutions and support. Six, uses their team as pawns for their own success. That's a huge one. Uh, Seven, lack of focus. Eight, takes credit for others' work. Nine, no respect for employees. Ten, little to no self-awareness. Eleven, a sense of entitlement rather than a sense of duty. 12, expects all employees to be like them. And then the eight traits of a toxic leader. Number one, frequent lying or inconsistent expectations. Number two, doesn't listen to feedback. Number three, arrogance. That's a big one. Number four, places importance on hierarchy. Number five, discriminates against employees. Number six, lacks confidence. Number seven, incompetent at their job. And number eight, they're self-interested. So the next one really made me chuckle, um, and you will you will see why here in just a second. So is your bad boss killing you? A recent survey found that U.S. employees spend an average of 13 hours during the work week and 6.2 hours over the weekend worrying about what their boss says or does. Together, that adds up to 19.2 hours a week of lament over bad boss woes. Turns out, Unreasonable or ineffective supervisors don't just affect the employee work life. They can indirectly damage family life and psychological and physical health. Ooh, big one. So then you have the many faces of the bad boss. The bully publicly or privately threatens and humiliates employees. The micromanager helicopters over employee shoulders to make sure projects are completed exactly as told. The poor communicator provides little direction and doesn't explain goals or deadlines clearly. The saboteur takes credit for ideas but rarely recognizes when jobs are done well, blames others when results are negative, and then the fickle boss suffers from unpredictable mood swings leading employees to confusion. Yeah. Um, And then the one that made me chuckle the most, bosses and toddlers. More similar than you think. A trait analysis asked 350 U.S. white-collar workers to compare toddler and supervisor behavior and found that bad supervisors might not be that much different from demanding tots. Most commonly cited traits, 60% are self-oriented, 49% are stubborn, 43% are overly demanding, 41% are impulsive, and 39% are interrogative. So, no, interrupted, excuse me. So, (laughs) the toddler thing killed me. I was like, wow, yeah. And then the 15 signs of a toxic work environment. Negligent communication, high turnover rate, harassment, discriminatory attitude, continuous fights or arguments, tons of workload, manipulation and blame games, nepotism and favoritism, disregard for employees' personal life, lack of growth and developmental opportunities, draining workplace energy, unclear vision and guidance, gossip circulates about, credit is always due, and then suppressed employees. So... So there's that. Um, And the toddler thing I I thought was perfect. Um, So see what we got here. Um, The fuck today says I was on my lunch break and was told I needed to come back to the store because he didn't believe I was working my schedule. Oh, good. Hero says I would point out ungrateful is missing on these lists. Yeah, pretty much. Um, Blame tag says my worst boss was definitely the fickle boss. So, yeah. So now I've got to, I'll pull it all back up again. I got to fast forward through the slides because I did a slideshow thing, but I figured I'd take a, I'd cut it off real quick to see what everybody's got to say in the chat. The next part we're going to go over is the response from the Twitter community. And boy, did they deliver. Blame tag, you're all in this too. So um, we've, we've got everybody you know, from, you know, as far as OGs go and then some unexpected non-followers who chimed in as well, which is great. So, uh, Sean says, I had a manager that told us that our work party served as our lunch break. Woo. 
what great way to reward your people, right? Was there pizza? <laughs> there has to be pizza. If pizza's not involved in that, then something's wrong. But anyway, so we're going to get here to our Twitter family. So, <laughs> um, good old Philly Essential employee. And these 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 are long, but they're they're. I said we'd go over them, and they're worth going over. These are examples that the community has given about how their bosses behaved. Um, can you do this work from home? I know you don't mind since you work paycheck to paycheck. On the few days the county ordered everything closed, my store, I'm the only one that gives permission to leave. Sell something to the police there. <laughs> On days of strong possible natural disasters like a few tornadoes the store is insured why would you leave well that's great it's insured but it doesn't ensure you're not going to die um one time while doing a presentation at a gym for him manager said why aren't you selling you should be selling can you stop stealing from me for five minutes and try to sell something go up to the machines they will buy something you have to stop bothering them uh also when i asked off to get his COVID shots. It was a huge deal because in the words of our dear leader, I have plans. Anything that went wrong from a computer issue to a lot burning out was our fault. He took responsibility for nothing because he was the, I'm the alpha here. Would constantly threaten to take from our paychecks, turn the heat on a 30 degree day. We have to pay for that. Something got stolen on our watch. We have to pay for that. Something got stolen on his watch. We have to pay for that. Uh, Philly says I might have some PTSD here. <laughs> Anyways, um, it was a it was good for a salesperson to be put down. It would motivate them to do better and impress me. Your financial problems are not mine. Leave them at home. He then cut our pay and hours because he wasn't making enough. You're not a man, or you're not you're just not really worth it, or you really need to make something of your life. But right now, you are just failing after every low sale. If a product expired. We were at fault for not selling it. Stopping to eat meant a lost sale, so we couldn't do that. The cameras and security system were for him to watch us, not for our protection. He let us know that, too, to keep us in line. Raises were seen as reprimandable offense. We were allowed no sick vacation or personal time off. Leave your drama at home, said the manager who brought his kid in and was always arguing with his wife in the back room. Would call a lot on off hours to ask what our game plan was for the day to make sure it aligned with getting more sales. He would whine on payday. He had to pay taxes on us and how unfair it was. He did too much for us. Why can't we give a little? Boy, but wait, there's more. Any sale under $40 was considered bad and we would have to explain why we didn't sell more. Any low sales showed we didn't care about this job and it was a personal insult to him because he worked so hard for us. Anytime we did a return, he would need detailed explanation on why we didn't try to get them to keep it. Anytime we use a discount or coupon, he would need a detailed explanation on why we did it and didn't try to get the customer not to do it. When a customer used a discount the boss made and approved personally, tell him to continue providing exceptional service for the community since I will be delving straight into my pocket for his purchases. Was more concerned with us stealing than customers. Was told there was never a case of actual employee theft. Thought lunch break and bathroom breaks were wage theft because he's a hard worker. Why do we need this? I give you guys a better discount than corporate. Corporate was 5%. His was 6%. You owe me now. This job should be your life. I expect you to always be thinking about it. Boss, I'm on vacation for the fifth time to a minimum wage employee. Uh, he watched the cameras religiously, when not there. Then we have the Conversation Hearts Explorer. Oh my God, I could go on for days. I had a boss that didn't understand why a business needed signage. I had another that would pay drivers by the day. And if you went over 40 hours in a week, you'd lose however many days it took to make up for your overtime. No extenuating circumstances. Also had a boss who gave preferential treatment to female employees. Better hours, priority for time off requests, higher bonuses, better station assignments, etc. Then, the cashier slave. 
managers delegating out the majority of their responsibilities. My guest service manager hasn't sent a Western Union in 1.5 years, hasn't had a book shift in nine months, and doesn't know how to do it anymore. Leaves long list of shit for us to do that are like clean off top of, etc. Refuses to learn. Leaves a minimum of one to two hours early every day and is in general just a nightmare. Worst possible combination of incompetence and micromanagement I've ever experienced. How are you going to tell us what to do when you don't know how to do it? At least our rewards metrics will be highest in the company. Yep. And Karen Harrison. My significant other got a call from his sort of former boss right as he is coming out of anesthesia. He just had hernia surgery for the third time. Wanted to know if significant other could work the next night. Um, our good friend Vanessa, a boss who doesn't send out the schedule because she got drunk with friends from out of town then expected me to work that morning on two hours notice. Boy, these are good. Our good friend Blame Tag, theater boss would expect us, hourly managers, to punch out before spending an hour or two filling out those ridiculous ticket void envelopes we had to do for every single refund or mispunched ticket. There could be hundreds on a busy night. Every $5 Tuesday, we got murdered. Every screen sold out. I was in charge and had to balance at least a dozen banks myself. On top of this, it was also the shift I had to do the employee schedule since her and the DM wouldn't ever approve my attendance versus hours budget until then. Because of this, I couldn't even get the schedule started until after 1 a.m. After a full eight-hour shift, of course, I wasn't allowed to be on the clock past my scheduled time. Every week, I'd be there until about 3.30 a.m. scheduling and entering into Kronos. And boy, it takes a long time to enter into Kronos. When she switched her toady to it because I kept fucking off her budget, she gave him an afternoon shift to do it. When he sucked and I had to come back on it, I didn't get the same kindness. I was taking a lot of smoking breaks due to general unhappiness with the job, and she would constantly hint that she was going to fire me for it, even though I was performing my duties as well as, and in most cases, better than the other managers. The night I got engaged, I came to see a movie with my fiance and her mother, ran into my boss, and gave her the news. She said, it's a mistake, and walked away. She was right, but still. She tried to tell me I had to work one more week past my notice because she never bothered to replace me and needed me for the new Fast and Furious opening, even though I was moving to a different state that weekend. I had given a two-month notice. Wow. Um, Customers used to come to me to complain about how rude she was. I would laugh and say, that's the general manager. I have no authority over her. Nobody does. She refused to fire a 50-year-old employee for sexually harassing a 16-year-old employee over Facebook because it didn't happen at the theater. Corporate said it was her call. The older employee was the only one willing to clean the ladies' restrooms. We can't lose her. Blaine Tank says, okay, that has to be the worst one. The rest is all wage theft and her just being an asshole all the time. The entire staff hated her and corporate loved her because she ran a tight ship and came in under budget at the expense of staff hours. Um, Karen Harrison, I'd already said the one about the anesthesia, but her follow-up was the same boss as the one that I left behind. When I handed my resignation letter, he asked if I didn't love him anymore. (laughs) Dude, I never worked here for love. Significant other is a tow driver. I was a cashier dispatcher. Retail PTSD. When all but one staff member quit, her, they had the audacity to ask why I wasn't hitting all metrics. Not like I had help. I was just surviving until he showed up two days later to help for four hours. Uh, Another one from her, assuming your staff is too stupid to understand business, and then they act like an ass when you show up with credible sources and a P&L to back it up. Yeah, they don't like when you bring facts. Cranky manager. Different examples, taking credit for employees' work when a mistake is made and they're called out their shift blame to an employee under them, pitting employees against each other, telling you that you cannot do it one way but refusing to give any direction otherwise, and then getting upset because the thing isn't done or making sure you get thrown under the bus for it not getting done, nepotism and or favoritism, smack talks other managers, says that to hire anyone from the services that help disabled people get work, they have to be able to be subsidized wages. That's, that's ugly. Um, refuses to communicate properly, but if you don't tell them something, it's the end of the freaking world. Makes racist and or ableist jokes. Tells their employees he doesn't like them and tries to play it off like a joke. Intentionally sabotages people they don't like. Refuses to deal with actual problem employees because they're cowardly. 
um, said, I really wish I had a screenshot of the Slack message where one of our managers threw a supervisor under a bus for something that everyone knew was his fault, but none of us could say squat because it was the GM son. Wow. Um, Shanzi tells you all about petty reasons they dislike people from other departments and at staff meetings, pulls you along with them to intentionally shade people that are on their bad side for whatever the petty and childish reason. Pulls you in their office to gossip to you about the other people in the office and tries to get you to give them dirt on what the other people in the office think about them or a particular initiative they're putting forward, using that intel to create a hostile work environment. Publicly shames people that don't meet quotas, while at the same time publicly praising those that do. Had a regional manager tell me they wanted to give me more responsibilities once, and I told them, no, thank you. I was fine with where I was. They cut my hours down to two hours a week to push me out because I didn't want to be a manager or be there for the long haul. Had another manager that would disrespect people's time by coming in late every Friday morning. I had to be there 20 minutes before open at 4.40 a.m. to prep. I wasn't getting paid to be there an extra 15 to 30 minutes. When frustration showed, they asked me if I liked working there. Had a couple of managers that would tell you something they wanted done but lacked key details. They couldn't be bothered with questions either. Made it clear they were annoyed by them when it didn't come out as they envisioned. They took it out on the person they delegated it to. Restaurant problems. Belittle you, especially in front of customers. Yeah, that's terrible. Uh, Retail PTSD again. Allowing and encouraging padding numbers to look good at region for a sales event. To me, that's pretty close to cooking the books. Well, that is cooking the books. Uh, Never filling much needed positions and underpaying staff in order to ensure they get a big bonus. Bosses that only care about the numbers. I could have had a great week in all areas and missed one KPI by 0.01%. That was the end of the world. Then we had current mood. Nope. When I worked at this one was ugly, guys. When I worked at Subway, owner allowed a tip jar. Sometimes we did a couple of dollars all night, and sometimes we would have maybe 15 or 20. Some night shifts, the owner would come in to check on us. Sometimes he would help himself to some of the cash tips. Yes, we noticed. When asked about it, he said, I don't have to let you have this tip jar in the first place. It's my store, as if he earned it. Um, Sassy Maggie. When the really nice manager is out and the two assistants spend the whole day pointing out his flaws but aren't angling for his job. And then from uh, Drew Gordon, uh, I, he had told me this story before, like in detail. Th- this one was really, really bad. I once worked with a guy who was a Christian, not a Bible thumper, and our manager was a Satanist. He harassed my coworker so much that he finally committed suicide. Boss threatened to fire anyone who asked for time off for the funeral. Then we have Erica Cochran. One guy in my first job, age 17 to 18, came in mid-shift and said he was letting the last four people in go, money reasons. I said, oh, good. I was the fifth last in. He said, oh, well, we are keeping X because she's better than you. A supervisor came in and found me crying. My heart out in the back found out what happened and tore the manager a new one. He came through to apologize to me later. Another manager called me while I was off on sick leave. I had a doctor's note, and he asked when are you coming back? Because I'm fed up covering your shifts. It was his fault. I was off in the first place. We had Sean Hoover. This was, this was mind boggling. My general manager looked me straight in the eye and said, I would have voted for Hitler if I, if it meant I got to meet Pearl Jam. This was not a joke. Um, Karen, once again, one time a customer was ripping me a new one about things out of my control. Boss was just on the other side of the door, heard it all. Guy left and boss asked me, was he giving you a hard way to go? Laughed and walked away. An Irish once had a director in the Irish version of Walmart tell me that he never, ever leaves a store unless someone cries. He always made it a point to publicly belittle people. He actually ended up having a nervous breakdown in the end. Here's the thing about him, though. The guy knew his stuff about retail, no doubt about it. If you got the chance to listen and learn, he would have been great. But instead of teaching, he just dictated old school style and few learned anything. Irish followed up with, do you wince when your phone goes off? When you're at home relaxing with the family, is it normal that you stop everything and take a call? Do you literally have stress dreams about jobs you left years ago? Yeah, that's toxic. And then the last one, current mood, nope. Oh, goodness, I had a glass door break once. It's one of the double doors, you know, the pane glass doors in the front. I heard a small crack, looked up, then all of a sudden the door shatters. Owner started to blame me. Repair guy told him it was a temperature issue, not mine. Normal breakage. So, yeah, um, in the chat, hello, Brooke, 
Uh, Sean says, my wife was nine months pregnant and we had to get our stuff packed up and ready to move to a new city for her new job. It was coming up on the annual summer training program and I was the training coordinator. I had the training program done in March and even wrote out detailed instructions with design and flow intent, learned objectives, who to contact for guest sessions, the whole nine and some. Management wanted me to stay to facilitate training or drive to and from the new place, two hours there and back, two weeks before my wife's due date. I told them I got to just go and good luck. I need to attend to the family. Yep. Blame tight. Correct. To the last of Irish's tweets. Absolutely. Cause I think all of us still have the, the PTSD where, you know, you drive by somewhere you used to work or you have dreams about it and you know, you wake up and especially like in my case, you know, I've been out of it for a while. And, and if I have a dream like that and you wake up, you're like, Oh, that really was a nightmare. So, I mean, it, it, it's pretty terrible. <clears throat> but you know the key you know to all this stuff is you know you have to understand these people don't own you you know and that's a lot of what i see these days and a lot of what i hear and you know from the field and, and from different people i've had contact with is bosses just acting like you know they're the great mighty oz and you're going to do whatever they tell you to do, even if it's on your own time. And, you know, once again, I'm going to say, you know, if you're that kind of manager, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. There's no other way around it. You are a horrible, horrible, horrible person, you know, as far as a leadership position. And that's the big thing. There is no leadership. Those kind of people are in it just for themselves. They're in it for, you know, for whatever they're over, whether it be a store or an area of a store or a department. It's all about them looking good for the sake of them. They they don't say thank you for the things that people do. They don't reciprocate, you know. Um, one of the things that burns my ass the most, the most, is when you're a store manager, you know, you sign up for this mess. There's things you sign up for. And it goes down the chain. If you're a store manager, a co-manager, assistant manager, department manager, guess what? You're on the hook for a lot of stuff. And the one pet peeve I have that pisses me off more than anything is a manager finds out that their closing manager or their closing person can't make it. And they will move mountains to find or pressure somebody to come cover that shift just so they do not have to. That, ladies and gentlemen, is shitty. And those are the kind of managers that people don't want to work for. Because that's the whole, you know, never ask an associate to do something they know that you wouldn't do as well. Well, nope. So, you know, you know, and, and guess what? If you find somebody to work it, that's fine. But when you start going outside of your scope and you start hitting up other people and other departments or you know, you're calling other stores to get somebody to come in, no, 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 no. It's your gig. Guess what? You drew the shortest straw on this day. Don't care if you already worked that morning. Take your ass on back to work and close. It's the right thing to do. Absolutely the right thing to do. And, you know, it, it's there's a whole lot of that. A whole lot. And they just, you know, they want all the glory of being a manager. But they don't want any of the, the hardship that comes with it. And those are also the same ones that will blame somebody. You know, they, they're the ones who walk with the DMs and kiss the DMs asses and, and, and throw somebody under the bus instead of taking accountability that it's their show. You know, and any district manager worth their salt should recognize if they've got somebody that they're walking with and they're blaming employees, that should be a red flag to them that this person's not ever going to take any accountability for anything and they're not fit to be a leader or a boss. You know, um, yes, hybrid, you're not as much of an asshole as you thought. Um, you know, it's a, uh, Iris says, I worked with a guy that got a written warning for leaving work when his wife went into labor because he didn't follow protocol and called the manager. You know, I would be like, okay, here, use my fucking pen or wouldn't sign it. You know, and that's, that's one thing that I've learned after being out. Look, they can't make you do things you don't want to do. You know, let's say, you know, 
they want you to give X amount of notice for your days off. Okay, that's fine. It falls within, you know, policy. Well, if you're expected to give them two weeks notice on what day you need off, by God, they need to have the schedule out in fucking time. And these people that like to go change schedules, Russell, we had some people like that at the tree. <laughs> um, they'll make a schedule. Everybody sees the schedule. They make plans around their work schedule. Then all of a sudden, you get a phone call. Why aren't you here? Well, the schedule's, oh, I changed the schedule. You should check. No, you shouldn't have to check your schedule. Whatever day the schedule's supposed to come out, that should be your final schedule. And if you're changing people's schedule without calling them or asking them, once again, that implies ownership of a person. You're making decisions for people that you have no right making, period. And you're a piece of shit for doing it. Piece of shit. Look in the mirror. You know, do you give your employees the same leeway that you give yourself? Those kind of managers? No. Right, Russell? Just didn't answer. That's my day off. Correct. That's the other thing. Don't answer the phone. There's no policy that says if you don't answer the phone on your day off that you get fired. We're all at a point now that we understand the labor movement enough that it's a buyer's market. They can't fire you. And, oh, boy, it'd be a really good time if they tried. Let them. Let them. Because there's a lot of stuff where people, you know, you may get called on your day off. You say, no, I'm not coming in. Then they treat you like shit. That's retaliation. Bosses need to understand that people are cognizant to how the shit works now. Use it to your advantage. Don't abuse it. I mean, you know, don't don't be malicious. But when you're being done wrong, use it. You know, if your boss asks you to do something that's uncomfortable, you know, something you feel uncomfortable doing. If it doesn't fall within the purview of the job, say no and keep it moving. What are they going to do? Take your birthday? No. And chances are, if they get mad at you, at you, that just proves that's not the kind of person you want to work for anyway. Um. Blame Tank says a good follow-up thread would be, uh, I don't know what got blocked out there. We did as managers that we feel bad for. I can only think of a few things I regret. Um, Iris says a toxic workplace will 100% take advantage of employees that are ignorant of their rights. Yes, absolutely. The fuck today says we don't even get payroll or truck schedule until Thursday for the week starting Sunday. That's great. Beautiful. Um, blame tank says, Oh my God, the phone calls and texts from that job were maddening constant. Uh, yeah. And that's the other thing. I wish the United States would follow suit with some of these countries that are actually, you know, making it illegal for workplaces to call you on your time off. And if they were to do that, that would actually put these managers in a position to actually own up to what their job requirements quote unquote are. Guess what? Somebody doesn't cover, come in. You have to go cover that shit. Tough shit. And the, the, the thing that is really, really rich about these kind of managers is they try to dictate what you do on your personal time and saying that it's theirs and if they can have you come in anytime. But by God, they will not interrupt their own personal time because it's an inconvenience. And that goes back to the whole difference between like a boss being, you know, between a boss and a leader. It, th those people don't deserve to be in that position. And you know what? If you're so burnt out that you hate the job and you've reached that point, do the smart thing. Do what's best for yourself and your employees. Get out. Step down. Go be happy. Don't take your bitterness out on your staff. Because you're not leading by example. You know, it, it's it's just ridiculous. Uh, Sean says, I had a manager that used to frequently tell everyone she worked on her birthday. Good for you. I'm off on mine. It, you know, look, there's no policy that says you, you 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 cannot work on your birthday. I mean, if you work on your birthday, good for you. What do you want, a medal? I mean, you know, maybe it would be more impactful if you say, I worked Christmas. It's your birthday. Okay? If you made that choice, what, what do you want? But if you make that choice and somebody signs off for their birthday, don't get mad especially if they follow the guidelines and they give you, you know, the notice of time off in advance. These are the rules. That's the thing. You know, a lot of these managers will give you rules, but those rules bend 
to their benefit if it inconveniences them. Uh, Ira says, there is nothing more toxic than an HR department. They are the beating heart of corporate toxicity with a smile on their face and pretending to be on your side. <laughs> yep. <coughs> Blame Tyke says, I worked 60 hours last week and got paid for 40. You can work a few extra hours. Yeah, you didn't have to. You just never leave because you hate your husband. Yeah, there you go. I mean, you know, when people make those decisions, if, if a manager wants to kill themselves, that's fine. Don't expect your employees to. You know, times are changing. People understand the mental health risks and, and the physical health risks and, and whatnot. It's, uh, I mean, I hate to say this because I'm in that kind of age group. You know, my opinion, obviously, with what I do here, as you guys know, has changed. But there's a lot of people in my age group that are like that. I worked 60 hours last week. Okay, good for you. I won't do that shit again. And it, it really is like a cult mentality because when you get out for like a period of time where you're actually able to clear your head, you look back at all the stuff that you did, and you're like, well, that was stupid. I got absolutely nothing out of that of any kind of benefit. And these managers that act this way towards their, guess what? <laughs> guess what? You get replaced in an instant. You could die today. No one's going to mourn. <laughs> you know, they're going to hire your replacement. You know, it, it's, you're not that special. And I think that's another thing too, is a lot of people in my age group got conned into believing that having a shiny name tag that said manager or boss on it, you know, meant something. It really doesn't because face it, especially in retail, you know, you're an overpaid stalker. <laughs> you're a stalker on salary, basically. They gets to play with numbers too, basically. Um, Sean says, I worked with someone who used to do the same thing, blame tag, work from sunup to sundown because of the same issue. Yeah. There again, not your staff's fault that you're miserable at home. Maybe they like their home life. They don't want to inter interrupt it. Uh, Russell said, I used to tell you that all the time, especially for inventory prep. Yep, you did, Russell. You did. I will say that you, you had had that attitude where you're, you're going to put in your time and that's it. You're not doing any extra. And I wish... You know, in a lot of instances, in hindsight, I would have calls. Knowing what I know now, I would love to go back to some of those situations and be that way and see what the hell they could actually do about it. Because armed with the knowledge that I have now, oh, I dare somebody. <laughs> Fire me, please. 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 I, I got an attorney. It's all good. Hello, Phoenix. Um, but yeah, you know, and I feel sorry for the employees. There are some employees that start out great. They're all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and they might like what they do. And once you get paired with a manager like that, it's awful. I mean, it, it just makes everything terrible. And, you know, once again, I say it. If you're one of these kind of people, you're a piece of shit. Don't care. You want to try to call me out on it? Please do. I will have a conversation. I am not scared. You know, and before anybody tries to call me out on any of that shit, you go back to the first slide and you look at all those traits, start checking which ones you are. It's kind of like those things you see on Facebook where it says like there's like a list of 50 things that you could do and you got to mark off how many of them you've done, you know, or like how many states you've been to. It's what they need to do for toxic manager training, you know, but then again, too, there's a lot of toxicity above that. I mean, you look at DMs and RVPs and stuff like that. I mean, it, it does, you know, trickle downhill. But, you know, there's just no use to treat people that way. You know, you're only as good as your team is. You're only as successful as the, the, the employees that you have. I've seen prime examples of managers treat people excellent. Unfortunately, I've seen far more examples of managers treating people like shit. And it crawls my nerves. I mean, I mean, it really does. And, you know, I'm in a position these days where, you know, I, it's, I'm just, it's just better to keep my mouth shut because, A, I'd be talking over their level anyway, and, and they they would look at me. It'd be kind of like the equivalent, like if you called them out with like everything that all the knowledge that we all have now, it would be kind of like a Karen situation. They, 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 they'd lose it, you know, and it goes back to what I've said that my mom said for eons. If it's not true, why are you so mad? You know? Oh, that would be a prime example. Um, 
Ira says, retail management in Ireland are just long-term strike breakers. They do almost the same job as everyone else, but are paid just enough to not organize or go on strike. Yes, yes. And and that right there is a common theme. I used to say at the beginning of my getting out of retail journey that they will never pay you what you're worth, but they'll pay you just enough to keep you. And that's exactly what it is. Pay just enough not to organize and strike. And, and really and truly going on strike is, is a ballsy thing. And I applaud anybody that does that because you're not guaranteed money. You know, it, that really shows that you're standing for what you need to stand for. And I, and I think that's admirable. Um, Hero says, I know an example of managers being beautiful, helpful human beings. Oh, Lord. Um, Ira says, they are mostly not smart. Usually are the type that never had any other job. Welcome, Doobie. Uh, I remember one time when I worked at Kroger, my manager berated me over the laziness of the other employees. I tried telling her that I have nothing to do with their laziness. She just cut me off. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's another thing. It's, and I, this is far more common than it needs to be. Look, when you're managers, yeah, I mean, all of us that have been managers, we know this. You talk about your employees amongst managers, okay? But when you are a manager, or supervisor, and you're talking to your underlings about employees, you, you're not fit to be a boss or a leader. And once again, you're a piece of shit. You know, you're just causing conflict. Because, you know, you never know whether or not the person that you're talking to is baiting you. Because there's some smart people out there, and they know how the game works. And they'll never let you know that they do. So keep running that mouth. See what that gets you. You might be surprised. Uh, Sean says, the system really seems to reward the worst people oftentimes, doesn't it? Sociopathy will get you to CEO. Yeah, and and that's, that's, and I think the reason that is, is because they want the business, you know, to be completely emotionally detached and cutthroat. You would, you would kill for the business. That's what they're looking for. And that's why those people get promoted. You know, it's like a club of people that just want to step on each other. So you just described my third keys. Um, Yeah. My manager would talk shit about me to the assistant managers. Um, Russell says my best quote when asked to do that manager duty while being hourly 11.59 an hour you want more i need more yeah yep um hero's right you have to be willing to claw the eyes out of others on that ladder i mean it it really is a shame to me that the amount of managers i've seen and come across that they they've lost all sense of humanity and look any of us has done it for a while we did too so i'm i'm not saying you know i was never one to blame people I would say that, you know, as I hit the wall, the trait that I adopted the most was the frustration with people calling in and me having to cover. Now, the difference was I would cover the shifts if I needed to cover the shifts, but I was awful pissed off about it and made it known. And I shouldn't have, but that was just a direct result of getting your ass beat for 30 years. (laughs) You know, it's, it's just enough. I mean, and... And so, yeah, you know, you start to realize when you're at that point, that's when you start to realize that no one cares about your personal time. It's not about that. It's, it's about, you know, you, you die for the business and that's just wrong. And, uh, you know, that's why hero, you're right. You gotta be willing to claw the eyes out of others on that ladder. And let me tell you something. How many of y'all have witnessed the sickness of managers with their heads so far up district managers asses? that it's nauseating boy that is just a sight to behold and it's infuriating at the same time but you know doobie says instead the management the previous job before kroger will call us to a group huddle politely explain what we need to improve on and motivate us in a positive manner that's the way it should be done that's the way it should be done and you know doobie the thing with that too is it never needs to be about what your employees need to do better you, the manager needs to include themselves in the conversation and it always needs to be a, what we as a team can do better. And it goes a long way for that manager to say myself included, 
you know, and there's the kind of people we're talking about. They will never do that. Those people will walk around acting like they are the greatest thing since sliced bread and no one can ever do a better job than them when it's just not true. Just not true. And, you know, there are some things you could turn a blind eye to if the manager did was fair. You know, if let's say, you know, manager calls you and had you come in on your day off. Well, if that manager has come in before because somebody was out because it was the right thing to do, yeah, that goes a long way. You might be more apt to come in on your day off. But if you know that the person you're working for ain't going to set foot in that building, if it's their day off, even if the place is on fucking fire, you're not going to work to the potential that you can to help them out. And because it's not team, you know, it's everybody else's fault, but theirs. They'll take the credit for all the good. Look at me. I'm the greatest manager in the world. But as soon as something's wrong, they'll blame it on Sally Joe cashier or, you know, whoever. And, you know, and, and that's terrible. Um, Doobie says the management at my previous job before Kroger were a lot more humbled and professional. One day at that job, I dealt with a mean, angry customer. And my manager later asked me if I was right. See, that's, that means a lot. Those little things, just asking somebody if they're okay. People don't understand how far that goes because a lot of people in these jobs feel like they're just number. Nobody cares about them. Just little things like that, you know? And, um, but at the same time, you have to kind of like model yourself to be that kind of person. You can't be like, hey, are you okay? Then five minutes later, cuss somebody out. You know, it it makes everything look disingenuous. Blame Tech says, with us, the managers who got respect were those of us down on the floor working a register or cleaning theaters with the staff. Um, yeah, that, that goes back to the old thing. You know, you've got to be in the trenches with your people. I mean, you just do. Yeah, Russell, that was your let's go smoke. Well, yeah, that was it. I mean, and you can you can use all sorts of ways to talk things out. You know, smoke breaks are great, you know, great example for you to kind of talk shop with your people and kind of blow off steam. And the other thing, too, I mean, most people that worked with me, you know, especially before I really hit the wall. Uh, Russell, wouldn't you say that we were we clowned around a lot, wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, we tried to make it fun. I mean, it, it was, we were in a terrible situation, but we tried to have a good time. Um, and, you know, you have to do that. It, everything can't be that serious. And, and I'll tell everybody once again, you know, the way I ran stores after I got out of that, I was a young manager and I'm going to set the world on fire thing. Once I actually realized as I got older and matured how important my team was, I was that manager who said, look, some days we ain't going to do shit. Some days we just going to be lazy. And, they're all like, yay. But the turnaround for that was, we'll do that. But the moment I go, let's go, we go. And it worked beautifully because you had plenty of downtime where you actually enjoyed the people you worked with. And that camaraderie and that team building made it like that when something was going down or we had a visit, you could be just be like, go. And it'd be like an army just moving to kill, you know, instinctively. You know, and that's because you gain people's respect and you treat them good. Um, Hero says, those that don't smoke can get a little resentful of the smoke break stuff. It's true, but I never once would tell somebody that they can't go outside or they can't sit down. Now, there are managers, though, that smoke like a chimney and, you know, probably account for a good hour or two a day. But by God, you know, they'll yell at somebody if you go to the bathroom for too long. And you can't do that. That's not how that works, you know. Yes, Russell, we got shit done. Um, Adobe says, I didn't realize what a good manager she was until when I started working at Kroger. The manager at this previous job may have been strict, but at least she cared. And that's another thing. Walking that line of strictness, but showing that you care, that really and truly uh, describes my first district manager at Hobby Lobby. Um, You know, our relationship was volatile, but, you know, she was good and and she treated me well. I mean, yeah, she had, I mean, only district manager ever threw my keys at and got away with and got told, no, 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 we don't have to do all that. But yeah, that was fun. But, um, but she was great and she got done dirty. So, uh, 
Doobie also says, also at Kroger, whenever one employee doesn't do their job properly on the day I was working, my manager would berate me and give me a punishment task. She even would make me scrape gum off the ground because somebody else didn't do something. See, I mean, I think we kind of see where Kroger is at at this moment in time. <laughs> um, you know, they're getting drugged through the mud pretty good as well they should. Doobie, I don't know if you've seen it. Um, I don't know if you're on Twitter. I had there's a link. I think it's called Good Jobs or something like that. If you want to see something really interesting, you can look up any company and see like their different violations, like OSHA and like payroll and stuff like that. Yeah, Kroger ripping a lot of people off. Uh, Iris says so many places are obsessed with employees always looking busy. Your way is far more effective. It is more effective because it builds that team environment because you know that you may come in and you don't feel good and be like you know my boss isn't going to put me in the ground lots of times i'm like hey you don't feel good i will you know just see if you can make it through the day i'm not going to have you do anything you know just just see if you can run a register or whatnot um because i you know there again too even the people under you have been conditioned to work one sick because they need the money but uh <clears throat> I am glad you're out of Kroger, actually. Good for you. Um, not helpful at all. I mean, they're, they're just getting drugged through, so I'm glad you got out. Not a real healthy company to work for, obviously. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you could uh, blame tag. I says, Irish, I would print out a crossword puzzle and put it on a clipboard. I always look busy. See, that's that's big brain stuff right there, blame tag. That's why we love you. You, you, you. You were very clever. But yeah, I mean, it, it's, you know, toxic managers don't see the value in their people. And, you know, they say that, you know, employees don't quit jobs, they quit bosses. And that is a, uh, you know, one of those deals where, you know, you're only as successful as your people are. I, I would love to see stories. I mean, it's kind of like when, when like entire stores walk out on their manager. That's a beautiful thing. Cause all of a sudden that manager scrambling, what the hell am I going to do? You know, blame tag says talking shit about Kroger with you lot has got them all over my targeted ads. Yeah. And that just gives us more stuff to poke at. Um, you know, so it's, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's something that needs to stop. I think that, you know, companies should take more interest in, you know, obviously in their people. Um, and, you know, we, there needs to be for all the training that they put people through, you know, as an associate, you have to go through all these little training modules and whatnot, you know, maybe management start going through training on how to properly treat people, you know, without using big 50 cent words, you know, break it down in a language they can understand. Something as simple as if you treat your people like shit, we're going to fire you. That should be effective. You know, <laughs> see some sort of pro team stance that kind of eliminates and neuters, you know, this toxicity. And, you know, because it's, it's not good for anybody. And it just causes, you know, just it's terrible. I mean, it really is. And, and here's the other thing, too. We talk about toxic managers. You know, if you're in a store that has many assistant managers, as an assistant, you could still be dealing with toxicity amongst your peers. And that's valid, too. You've got those kind of managers that are the same level as you, talking shit about you behind your back. You find out about it, and it makes the entire management team, you know, not very cohesive. And, you know, you should never have to work somewhere where you're always watching your back. So, but having said that, this has been a good rant. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed the therapy. Um, I had posted a poll, and so far the poll is doing well. And, uh, you know, I'll probably do it. I think what I'm going to do is, like, I don't know when I'll start it. Start doing a video on YouTube. No commentary, just some background music or whatnot, like highlighting the best retail tweets of the week. You know, or Blame Tag had an idea, maybe somehow to present them and let the community vote on them or whatnot. I, I want to try to do some different kind of content that still w is within our purview of what, what we're going over. You know, that's a little bit more digestible and good night, Phoenix. Um, things like that. And, uh, 
see what we can kind of come up with. Still want to do the Retail Wars on Comic Book, though. So hopefully we'll be on that soon. But everybody, thank you so much for being here. Next week is uh, Black Friday. Um, uh, hold on a second. Doobie says, also, would you consider this person to be a bad manager? One time at my first job, our manager made us stay an extra couple of hours to make sure all freight gets back stock. We fell behind on our task. Uh, I think that that's, that could be considered a bad manager if they weren't planning for the freight. Um, and, you know, making people stay over, you know, it seems like maybe not necessarily a bad manager, but a bad planner. You know, you need to be able to adapt. And that probably was very reactive instead of proactive. And who knows, that manager, you know, might have been accountable for the freight and was overworking people to not make themselves look bad. But that that would be, we'd need a little bit more context on that. That could be if it was punitive. Um, maybe not. So, but anyway, you guys have a great night. Thanks for being here. Uh, Wednesday, we're going to get a little bit of Hollywood shine, so it'll be fun. Uh, if you guys have suggestions or things you guys want to see, please let me know. Um, if you have people, you know, in your world that have a story to tell and they need somewhere to tell it, send them to me. So also, once again, we want to thank the Twitter community. It's great. It's absolutely fantastic. Best community on the internet. So everybody have a wonderful night and we will see you next time.